Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with Code Poodle to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Hey what's going on everybody, it's Poodle back with another College Football 25 video and today I'm going to be going over the fastest way to upgrade your player in CFB 25. And of course if you haven't already, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, check out my other social links down below, and of course always check out Underdog and use Code Poodle. So first things first, we're going to go how to increase player progression to start with because there's a few ways there's how you earn xp how you increase the way in which you get xp and then of course the ways you could really like bona fide increasing your player so to start off go over to coaching abilities now this is something that you're going to have to kind of do off rip if you're going to be a guy who wants to level up their player you definitely want to go with the motivator tree which is going to be the one who's really good in strong player development now you don't have to pick this as your starting coach you can start elsewhere but understand that coaching points are very very limited in the sense you have to go a certain way so you can't just like I, I don't recommend kind of going across all of them but you can do it now let's say you didn't pick it you can just go in there and buy it if you did pick it you start in that direction so the motivator tree is a great way like i mentioned in my scouting video as a way to get a leg up on other people considering all things are equal so the motivator tree will give you a leg up in terms of player development versus what other people are getting just by playing the game right so all these are going to be the same. The only difference is going to be position. So I'm going to go through one. So paid forward is pretty simple. Bonus XP for QBs when QBs are drafted in the top three rounds. So LSU has Garrett Nussmeyer at QB. Let's say he has a great junior year. He ends up getting drafted in the top three rounds. My recruit quarterback or my quarterback that may be on the roster, a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, they will get bonus XP on the roster because I had someone drafted at that spot. It's pretty much insinuating you're good at building quarterbacks. Next one is hot hand QB. QB stay hot through timeouts, quarter changes, and across games. So while this isn't exactly XP, it does keep your player hot, which means they can perform better throughout games and across games, which does keep them doing better, which in turn will lead to awards and potentially better stats. Put in work QB. Quarterbacks get an offseason training boost. So offseason training boost is what happens when you go through the offseason oh, through a year, what I meant when I said year-long progression. You pretty much at the end of the year get a year-long bump when you do advance past then so you'll just kind of see when the year ends you get to that week where it's training week and you'll see players just bump up so this package is important to ensure that your players do get boosted adequately and get bumped up because of course it's not like just try and cut as madden with just upgrading via every week you break a record you get you get stats and you do that so you definitely want to be getting those training boosts and the last one is locked in qb quarterbacks start the fourth quarter hot in close games so ideally pay it forward tier one and put in work the tier three are the most important ones for xp while the other ones you will need to get past two i don't really recommend you do four i think you really just want to get those first three the next thing is master motivator so master motivator is going to be like the elite tier for motivator now to get this you do need to have five players drafted which is a lot easier uh said than done of course if you're a lower franchise it may be very hard like a lower prestige to get like enough recruits that are good enough to actually get them drafted so it'll be a little bit tougher but if you're a top tier program you probably have a few guys that get drafted every year so that probably takes at least a season probably ends up taking two so keep that in mind you definitely want to save some points you do get the everybody eats which increases all xp gains for quarterbacks which is very useful because that means that going forward all xp you get for quarterbacks will be boosted it's definitely something you want of course it goes across same situation i wouldn't go beyond three now keep this in mind for xp this video is strictly about getting XP, so keep in mind that if you're spending money, if you're spending points here, you can't spend it elsewhere. So just know that when you're allocating a few wasted ones here, like the two one that you may not want, although it's useful, it's not all about XP to get to three. You have to go through one and two first, and then three, although keeping them not hurt helps, but that's definitely something to keep in mind. If you look below the 94 overall on Harold Perkins, you can see his XP bar. That is the bar that fills up to get him skill points. And if you look in the top right corner, you can see he currently has two skill points and it requires five to upgrade pass coverage, five for IQ, seven for power, seven for pass rush, which is maxed out. Run stopping is six and quickness is 13. So as you get higher, it's going to cost more. And these are how you do acquire skill points. So in season skill points for my playthrough isn't the easiest thing to get, especially without those packages. But it is something that's going to take time. So you you may only get like one upgrade as a high overall player per season. You may get none. So it's definitely important to focus on those end of the season ones. And what this is really alluding to is that there's going to be a few ways to really boost it. So you definitely want to take advantage of those because it's not like you're going to be getting Harold Perkins or another guy from like an 85 to an 89 in like five weeks. Like you could possibly get in Madden if you're doing your training. You get an upgrade point via motivation or via a scenario. It's definitely a lot tougher. 
I do have two examples of two players that I did develop playing through a uh, dynasty yesterday. The thing is, is that you can have a great historic type season. You can win awards and that actually will greatly boost your off season progression. So regular type seasons, you probably only end up getting that end of the year training boost with the package a little bit more, a good year, a down year less, a great year more. But when you have historic type seasons, you actually do find a lot of boost. Also booster based on like freshman, junior, sophomore, senior, all those things play a role in how much you boost up. It seems like you, towards senior year, you're, you're kind of there, right? So the skill points like you saw in Perkins is kind of there. Your players develop early on in the their collegiate careers when you're going to get those big boosts. So for instance, these are two examples. Jelani Watkins, freshman wide receiver for LSU, is a 72 overall. So in my first run through, I'm going to go through these two guys first and then show you what they progressed to. In my first run through, Jelani Watkins had an historic year. He won an Offensive Player of the Year award. He got everything, and when we went through over to the next season, he had a tremendous boost, as well as Samson Jr., who's also a redshirt freshman who uh, transferred over to LSU. He had another great year, but did not win the award. So you're going to see the difference in how you can boost players. So this is the year two version of the LSU Tigers after I did my run through compared to the other one I showed you, which was base year one. So Jelani Watkins had a jump from 72 to 90 in one year. He had an historic season. He led the conference in just about everything. He led the league in just about everything. So that goes to show you that a freshman wide receiver, a true freshman wide receiver with a huge historic season winning an award can go from 72 to 90, which is tremendous. So this just goes again in terms of strategy of when you recruit, like the importance of these freshmen, yeah, they might be 70 overalls. It may take time, but if you have an historic freshman type year, historic sophomore type year, you can have these huge jumps in overall. So Jelani Watkins is now a 90. Now, if you go on down, Samson, on the other hand, is now, I believe, an 82. So Samson's an 82, but he was a 77. A five-point jump is pretty huge. If he did that over his career all the way up to, let's just say, senior year, he would be in the 90s, right? Now, Samson didn't win any awards. He had a great year, but no awards. So it kind of seems like a very good, like a great year could be up to five points. A historic season could be 18, if maybe even more if he won the Heisman. And then a regular type low average season. I saw a few of my guys only got like two points, one point. Uh, uh, Neusmeyer, for instance, only got four while having a good season. So this is something to keep in mind. So to wrap it all up, the best way to get XP is coaching packages first. Make sure you set yourself up with the right foundation. Next is going to actually be playing the game, getting stats, playing good in games week to week. You will be getting skill points as you're a younger player. Obviously, those skill points will be easier to accrue as you're well, younger and a lower overall player. As you get up to be a higher overall player throughout the collegiate career, it's going to be harder, as well as winning awards and season-long goals. So just kind of like Madden in that sense, where you want to win awards, you want to be focused on being a top stat leader, it kind of works that way here as well. The only difference is it's a little harder to track in the sense of you're not kind of seeing it, you're not getting the points as they come. It's kind of a more long-haul process, but which is kind of fun about this game is kind of like a yearly refresh. You get that big XP, that those big boosts at the end of the year, and you kind of see what you're going into next year with your new recruits. So that pretty much wraps it up. If you have any questions regarding XP and the fastest way to grow your players, comment down below, ask the questions, hit me up on Twitter if you need some more in-depth advice. Make sure to like and subscribe if this video helped you out. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace.